31st Street Baptist Church, a.k.a. 31 SBC, a.k.a. the church that's on the hill, the hill that's in the city. The city is Richmond, Virginia, and my brothers and my sisters, there is a revival going on. Virtual family, Facebook walkers, YouTube testifiers, conference line callers, Boris Bomquisha, Shaniqua, Lottie Dottie, and everybody. Last night it got so good that the devil had to leave the chat. Long story short, see what happened was, what it was was, faster than a speeding bullet and more powerful than a locomotive, that bad sister from Decatur, Georgia, blew in like a freight train last night and reminded us that rain is inevitable, but God is dependable. And she asked a question. If you're ready for the question, just say question. Can you stand the rain? Great God from Mount Zion, tutti, fruity, all rooty, great googly wooglies. This ain't no time to be snooty, and I ain't studying about bougie. This is no time to be playing church, because we've got to be the church. After all, we wrestle not only against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers in high places. But my brothers and my sisters, come on in the room and revive yourself. And of course, we got some sanctified soul that is coming tonight. Sanctified soul that will unfold and will take us higher because God is doing a new thing. This has been a crazy day for some folk. Crazy on the job, crazy with people you came in contact with, a crazy year, but God is still doing a new thing. Lost the love of your life, but God is still doing a new thing. God can ever presently do a new thing. I have been so sick, someone says, but sick bed or no bed, God can still do a new thing. I did everything I could and still lost the house, but God is still doing a new thing. Sometimes it's greater later because God is still doing a new thing. I failed the class. Take it again and watch God do a new thing through the mentor that comes and is the mentor of a lifetime. Thought I'd lose my mind, but he kept you close in your right mind to do a new thing. Grip, grief gripped me and I'm distressed and depressed. Well, can you stand the rain so that God can do a new thing? Messed up, stepped up and messed up again, but God can still do a new thing. I don't think that you get it. That's why I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul will make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify and let us exalt God's name together. Like I said, good evening, 31st Street. Baptist Church. And because it's such a wonderful night, such a wonderful revival, such a presence that we have in the house, I've asked my dear brother, Reverend Dr. Leo Keith, to come and pray us into the evening. Pray for us, pray for our preacher, pray for our congregation, pray for our church, and you can pray for yourself too. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. We're all gathered together in this sacred space. And I would that you would for just one moment look at the person next to you and say, I'm glad that you're here. And if you're able to, only if you're able to, just reach out and touch somebody. As we go to God in prayer. Oh, gracious and eternal God, it's been a good day. Matter of fact, it's been a wonderful day. It's been a fantastic day, and you've allowed us to come into your sanctuary to give praises to thy holy name. And for that, O oh Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we ask now that you allow your Holy Spirit to run from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Allow your spirit, Lord, to breathe on us in this place. Allow your spirit, Lord, to touch each and every individual right now. Lord, we've come across the highways and byways. We've come a mighty long way. But because of your mercy and your grace, you have allowed us to come into your sanctuary. So Lord, we lift up our holy hands. We say thank you. Thank you for your goodness and thank you for your mercy. Lord, we know that we have faith 
we have a lot of faith, but we all want to say, help me with my unbelief that I be able to be stronger in my faith than may come closer and closer to you. So Lord, we're in a revival now. We're in a revival now. We're in a revival now. So while we're in a revival, Lord, we ask that you revive our spirits. We ask, Lord, that you restore our souls. We ask, Lord, that you renew and refresh and refry and refresh each and every one of our spirits. Lord, come into this place. Bless the man who stands behind this sacred desk and proclaim your word this night. Lord, we know that you've blessed him in the past. Do him justice tonight, Lord. Lift him up higher. Give him that fire that burns deep within, that it may burn within our hearts, so that we might see the glory of God in the highest. Lord, have your way in this place. Bless the shepherd of this flock. Lord, you've been guiding them a mighty long way, and we know that you're going to do marvelous and great things with them in the future. But right now, Lord, have your way. Have your way in this place, oh Lord. Have your way, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit trip down in this place. Have your way, Lord. Touch us, Lord, in a special way. For we pray it all in Jesus' precious name. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say, Amen. 31st Street, I need your help this evening. I need you to stand to your feet as we call on the name of the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. If you come to be revived, can you clap your hands with us like this? Let's sing.
day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, if you're excited to be in the house of God on this second night of revival, will you give God praise in this place? Come on, we can do better than that. Did God get you through the day? Has God almost gotten you through the week? Anybody's testimony, he's the Lord over my life. And so I'll praise him on a Thursday night like it's Sunday morning because God has been that good to us. Tell your neighbor just one thing God did for you today. Tell them, tell them one thing God has done for you today. And if you couldn't think of any other reason, he woke you up this morning. I said he woke you up this morning. I said he woke you up this morning when you couldn't wake yourself up. I don't know about you, but that's reason enough for him to be the Lord over my life. Come on. He's the Lord over my life. shall rejoice and be glad in it. You may be seated in the house of God. I am so grateful that you have come on night two of our spring revival here at 31st Street Baptist Church. So all of our online viewers tonight, we know there are many of you in the virtual sanctuary. Good evening and welcome to 31st Street Baptist Church. We pray that when you are here in the city, here in the area, that you'll come on out and be with us in the physical sanctuary. And we're so grateful that you decided to take some time tonight to be with us here in revival part two. And for all of our brothers and sisters who are here for the very first time, if this is your first time at 31st Street, will you wave your hands at us so we can see? I see you in the back. Hey! We see you up front. Hey! So grateful to God that you decided to come out tonight and to worship on night two of our revival. If you were here yesterday and your soul was blessed, will you just uh, signify by saying hallelujah and giving God glory? I am so grateful for the preaching ministry of the Reverend, soon to be Reverend Dr. Jennifer Carner, who came in here and told us we can stand the rain. Sunny days, everybody loves them, but can you stand the rain? And I'm grateful to God for her witness and for her power in preaching on last night. And tonight we are going to continue with our powerful preaching and the movement of the Word of God. We've got none other than this Reverend, soon to be Reverend Dr. Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr., who is with us from Chicago, Illinois. Will you help me to welcome him on tonight? He is the proud senior pastor of the Fellowship Baptist Church, Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois, where he serves faithfully in worship and ministry there. Uh, they have a powerful, phenomenal ministry that reaches an audience of some 25,000 people each and every Sunday. And I'm grateful to God that he has chosen to come and be a part of this experience. He is an educated man with degrees from the Morehouse College and his undergrad degree. He's gotten graduate degrees from Vanderbilt University as well as the Candler School of Theology in Emory University. And he is pursuing his PhD in African-American preaching and sacred rhetoric at Christian Theological Seminary, just as the soon-to-be Reverend Dr. Jennifer Carner was on last night. But beyond all of that, I'm grateful to God that he's just a good brother, a good brother, a Alpha Phi Alpha for sure, but a good brother, a solid man of God. And to be, I call him affectionately, the LeBron James of our generation. You can't meet a better person or a better preacher than the Reverend Reginald Wayne Sharp. So I am so excited that my brother beloved is here in the building for its first time, but I know it won't be his last. And y'all know how we get down. So 31st Street, will you extend your hand to our preacher tonight and say, Pastor Sharp, we need a word. Pastor Sharp, we need a word. Preach the word, Pastor Sharp. 
Many of our family and some of the team from Fellowship is here, and I'm grateful for their presence on today uh, to be here on this day. If we are going higher in worship. Will you pray for him when there is prayer in the pews, there is power in the pulpit, and after we hear from our music ministry, the very next voice that you will hear is the Reverend Reginald Wayne Sharp, who's come to us from the Fellowship Chicago Church. Y'all pray for him. Come on, music ministry. Let's go higher in worship. Psalm 112 says, who is like the Lord? Nobody. And we're singing on tonight, nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Let's go. Lord, you heal the sick. Yeah. And you raise the dead. With two fish and five loaves of bread, 5,000 souls you fed. If you did it back then, you can do it again. Nobody but you. Let's take it up, y'all. Nobody but you, Lord. I came to tell you, child. Nobody but you. Lord, you heal the sick, and you raise the dead, with two fish and five loaves of bread, five thousand souls you fed, if you did it back then, you can do it again.
Is there anybody glad tonight that Jesus is a fence that protects us, that, that protects us and guards us and covers us? I invite you tonight to stand to your feet as you're able to stand as we go to God in prayer tonight. This choir has been singing their faces off. And before we pray, just help me thank God for this music ministry tonight. Thank you all for setting the atmosphere. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we first say thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you that early this morning when the sweet scintillating sunshine tiptoed across our faces, we realized that we were recipients of a gift called a brand new day. And we don't take that for granted. Lord, we thank you that all day long you've been with us and you have been a fence and a hedge all around us. We don't just thank you for how you've kept us today, but we thank you for the person to our left and our right. Thank you, God, for how you've protected them all day long, how you've sent just enough peace and just enough provisions to help us make it through this day. We thank you for this sacred space called 31st Street. We thank you for Pastor Mitchell and his wife and his children. We thank you for what you've done already in this revival. We thank you for the Reverend soon to be Dr. Jennifer Connor who poured mightily into us last night. And now, oh God, we ask that you would do it again. Have thine own way. Walk up and down every aisle, every pew, send your Holy Ghost to heal, minister, and deliver in the name of the one who can still turn water into wine. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen, amen, and amen. Would you do me a favor and hug two or three people and tell them something good is going to happen tonight? Come on, tell them something good is going to happen tonight. Fist bump them, hug them. Let them know something good is going to happen tonight. Oh, yes. Now, if you believe what you told somebody else, put those hands together and give God praise for the good thing that shall happen on this evening. You may be seated just for a moment. I want to take a personal moment to just thank God for another day's journey. You know, the older I get, I realize when the old preacher used to get up and start talking about it's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it, that they weren't just talking. It's a gift to be alive. And I hope I'm not the only one that's glad you have some breath left in your lungs. I know that's right. I'm grateful to be here in Richmond. I've already been taken to Mama J's earlier. It took me three hours to sleep to recover from the meal that I had, but that's because your pastor is gracious and he wanted to make sure that on my trip through Richmond, I ate real, real good today. Isn't he somebody's preacher? Isn't he an amazing pastor? Isn't he just a down-to-earth great guy? Come on, help me celebrate Pastor Joshua Mitchell, Dr. Joshua Mitchell. Love you, man. We love you, man church you all have been given a gift as a pastor and I pray you never take his leadership his pastoral prowess for granted and you can't celebrate Mickey without celebrating Minnie you can't celebrate Donna without celebrating Daisy can we thank God for Dr. Lori come on let's celebrate Dr. Lori our inimitable first lady we celebrate you and the Mitchell boys come on give it up for them too full of energy, full of life. <laughs> and uh, we're grateful, we're grateful for this whole family. I just love when you see good people blessed and to know that for four years, for four years, started in the pandemonium of the pandemic and look what the Lord has done with 31st Street Baptist Church. Isn't God good? 
I know that's right. God is good. It's good to see you, 31st. I watch you almost every week online, and I see your pastor up here sweating and preaching, and y'all are singing and shouting. So I'm excited to be in the room, but don't get it twisted. There are thousands of us, just like me, watching, tuning in virtually every week. And I want to thank you for the way you are making this nation better through your worship and the word that emanates from this place week in and week out. Again, I told you this music ministry already blessed me, but tonight is such a serendipitous moment because some of the closest people in my life that I'm privileged to do life with and to serve with just happen to be in Richmond tonight. And my best friend in the world, uh, Dr. James Wesley Dennis III, who is the Associate Director of Programs of the Leadership Education uh, department of Duke Divinity School is in town leading one of his initiatives. I want him to stand. Dr. Dennis, would you stand? Come on, help me thank God for one of my best friends. He doesn't go to church a lot, so y'all be kind to him. He told me he hadn't been to church since February, so walk up to him and tell him I'm praying for you, Doc, if you see him after church. And then y'all, so a part of the program he's leading my executive pastor, close brother from Fellowship Chicago, and our youth pastor are both receiving $5,000 grants through the program, and they just happen to be in Richmond uh, fulfilling their assignment this week. I want to invite Pastor Jill and Pastor Pope to stand. Help me welcome them into Richmond as well. Isn't that something? our executive pastor of Fellowship Chicago and our youth pastor, and both are preachers in their own right. And then I look over to my right, your left, and our, our music director, Willie Jones, flew in today just to be in worship. So y'all give all these Chicagoans a big hand. Thank you, Brother Willie. Now listen, y'all already blazing. He's just adding some hot sauce to the chicken. That's all it is. The chicken's already fried well. He's just a little hot sauce. And I'm excited to be here tonight to worship. I don't want to be before you long. I just have about a two-hour message. And I think that, um, no, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Come with me to the third psalm, the third psalm, the third psalm. There is a word from the Lord tonight. And, uh, and I'm excited to all the preachers and clergy that I might not know. I want to just acknowledge you. Would you wave all women in ministry, women and men in ministry that are in here? God bless you. I know I got at least 10 prayers in the pews today. And I thank you for that. I want to invite you to the third psalm. <clears throat> And before I read this, I want to tell you, I've read this psalm for years, but certain seasons of your life make the word work differently. You keep on living, keep saying good morning, and certain scriptures mean something now that they didn't mean then. And that's what this has meant to me in this season of my life. You'll understand as I continue in the message. But I want to read Psalm 3, verse 3 until you're hearing. And this is what it says from the King James Version. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. One more time, just because it sounds so sweet. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to talk today from this thought very simply. It's just one of dim days. It's just one of them days. I know I have some grammarians in the room that are saying, no preacher, you should say it's just one of those days. No, I said exactly what I meant to say. Because if you understand Ebonics, if you understand black English, if you understand southern regionalisms, you understand that when we're talking to our people, sometimes we don't say them, we say them. And if you put this message up on YouTube, Pastor, you make sure they spell it right, D-E-M, them. And I want you to smile at your neighbor. If you don't like who you sit by, that's your fault because you sat down beside them. Smile at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I know what the preacher's talking about. Tell them sometimes it's just one of them days. I don't know if you listen to any music other than gospel music, but that's what Monica said years ago. She has a whole song called It's Just One of Them Days. 
Yeah, it's just one of them days. I want to borrow the words of Monica today to, to remind us that I don't care how saved you are, how long you walk with Jesus, you will have one of them days. I don't care if you eat Genesis for breakfast, Leviticus and Psalms for lunch and Revelation for dinner. You're going to have one of them days. I don't care if you have a PhD or no D at all. You're going to have one of them days. At some point in life, we just run up on one of those days that are challenging and intense and stressful. One of those days where you can't wait for the sun to set and a new day to come because the day just wore you out. It's one of them days where if it ain't one thing, it's another. And, and when I reflected over this year, this is what you call, Dr. Lori, a leap year. It's a leap year because on the last day of February, we added a day this year. It only happens every four years where we add a day to a 28-month day calendar. Uh, we add a 29th day every four years. It's called a leap year. And I was inquisitive this year. I was trying to figure it out what causes a leap year. How did we get here? And it started in the late 16th century with Pope Gregory, who was the leader of the Catholic Church. He wanted to make sure that East remained in spring so what he deduced was that I need to add a extra day every four years to keep the calendar in sync if we go too long without a leap year the entire calendar will be out of sync some people who study calendars and meteorologists have also uh, surmised that uh, if you go 100 years without a leap year, the calendar will be 24 days off. And in 700 years, if you go 700 years without a leap year, Christmas would be in summertime and summertime would be in December. So literally to keep the cyclical nature of the calendar in sync, one day has to come every four years just to make sure the seasons say stay synced. And if it is true for one day at the end of February, it is also true for some difficult days that happen in your life. What if I walked up in 31st Street just to tell you some days have to come because God is trying to keep your soul in sync? Some difficult days have to come up on you. Some difficult moments have to arrive in your life because God is trying to keep you in sync with God's purpose for your life. You're still looking at me like I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you. If you had every day that was sunshine, you would be living in a drought. And if you had every day that was, a, that was rain, you would be living in a perpetual flood. But to balance out the climate and the terrain, of your life, God allows what Frankie Beverly and Mays to, to call its joy and pain, its sunshine and rain, and all of the days balance out to make sure we stay sync. See, if you had too many days that were amazing and pristine and perfect and polished, you wouldn't pray. If you had too many days that were amazing and wonderful and that were going your way, you would not be in revival tonight. We'd have to pull you off the bar stool at, at some lounge or some tavern tonight because you would just be floating away in your own ecstasy. But God wants to keep you balanced. God wants to keep your soul in check. And so God allows good days and bad days. God allows mountaintops and valleys village visits. God allows serendipitous moments and some struggles. God allows rainy days and sunshiny days because he's trying to keep your soul in sync with the season which is why the psalmist said it was good that I was afflicted so that I could learn God's statutes that's why the psalmist says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers us out of them all you wouldn't even know he was a deliverer if you were never stuck you wouldn't know he was a healer I'm gonna preach whether y'all help me or not so y'all might as well come on uh-huh yeah you wouldn't know he was a healer if you were never sick you wouldn't know he was a provider if you were never broke you would 
wouldn't know he was a friend if you were never lonely. You would never know he was a keeper if you never grieved. You would never know he was light if you were never in the darkness. Who in the church early in the service can thank God not just for your good days but also your bad days because every day keeps your soul in the purpose of God which is why David said surely goodness and mercy shall follow me not just on my good days but all my days and every day that comes no matter how challenging it is it is a day to keep our souls in sync so when it's good I remember that trouble doesn't last always and when it's bad I remember trouble doesn't last always when it's morning I remember weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and when it's nighttime, I still remember weeping endures for a night but joy comes I wish I had 30 witnesses who could just pause and thank God for every day. The day that they lied on you. The day that they left you. The day you got fired. The day that you were struggling because those are the days where I learned about God and myself and I know that I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stay. I feel like preaching on a Thursday. Where are the witnesses in the room that could just give God praise at this revival for every day? Ah, uh, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know God could solve them. And David is just having one of them days in the text. Because I, I, I don't want to tell you this, but I need you to know that your anointing does not keep you from being annoyed. And you being powerful does not prevent you from facing problems. He was a king and his own kid was trying to kidnap the kingdom. Uh, his son Absalom is trying to usurp the kingdom of his father. His own son Absalom is trying to become king out of sync. He's trying to jump ahead of his father. So he stood at the gate for four years and manipulated people because usually when you have an issue with somebody, you don't just do it by yourself. You don't confront them by yourself. You have to corral a whole group that also feels what you feel. So for four years, this trifling son of a king stood at the gate to corral all the people who had an issue with King David. And he has to deal now with a son trying to take the kingdom from him. And David is the rightful king. He has countless foes and he has contamination in his family. Uh, he, he has consistent frustration because verse 1 and verse 2 says, Lord, how are they increased? It's in your Bible, like Dr. Cosby says. It's still in there unless you tore it out. It's in there. It says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Verse 2, many there be which say of my soul there's no help for him in God. It's consistent frustration. It's countless foes. It's, it's, it's contamination in the family. I hate to tell you that some of the most trifling people you will ever meet got your last name. Uh, it, it, it's consistent frustration. It's contamination in the family. It's countless foes and their concerns in his own faith because it's another fight when somebody says even God won't help you. It's a whole different fight when you got to wonder, have I messed up so bad that I'm going through this because God is getting me back? He has concerns about his faith. He has consistent frustration. He has contamination in the family. He has countless foes. He has concerns about his faith. He has consistent frustration. He has contamination in the family. He has countless foes. He has concerns about his faith. He has consistent frustration. He has contamination in the family and he has countless foes. You think I'm talking about David? I'm talking about us. We have concerns about our faith and consistent frustrations and contamination in the family and countless enemies, countless foes and with all of those entities pressing up against the peace of his spirit he slips at the end of verse 2 into this five letter word called Selah S-E-L-A-H it's in your Bible it's right there and some scholars suggest it's a musical notation that means stop pause think about it 
And he's out of verse 1 now. He's a long way from verse 2. And he has a moment to just park, pause, and think about it. And while he is reflecting on how one of them days is rocking his mind and this angst and this anxiety and this pressure is pressing against the precipice of his own cerebral cortex, but he slips into Selah. And he has a moment to stop, pause, and think about it. And he stops thinking about the countless foes for a minute. He stops thinking about the contempt in the family for a minute. He stops thinking about the consistent frustration. He stops thinking about the concerns in his faith and he starts thinking about the fact that but thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. Church folk don't know when to shout. Yet my glory and the lifter of my head. Every now and then you got to pull away on one of them days and remind yourself with everything around you there's still a God above you who still has power to fix whatever's going on in front of you. Did I say that too fast? On one of them days you got to remind yourself that in spite of what's going on around you there's a God above you that can still handle what's in front of you. Did I say it too fast. I said on one of them days, in spite of what's around you, there's still a God above you that can handle what's in front of you. And all I came to tell you is when you face one of them days again, I have some peace for you. I have some principles for you that I invite you to apply to your life. Can I tell you some things that David wanted me to tell you when you have one of them days like he was having and all of this was going on, multifactorial issues were happening in his life. Number one, uh, you've got to know that God will switch your perspective. Tell your neighbor, God will switch your perspective. Now, I don't want to walk forward into this text. Can I back into this text tonight? Let's back into verse 3. Let's start over there at the end where it says that God is the lifter up of my head. I just told you he'll switch your perspective and, and, and if you want to hear the story about what David is going through in this text, you got to go back to 2 Samuel chapter 15 through chapter 18 to see how all of this unfolds and when I reread the text just this morning Dr. Mitchell, I read 2 Samuel 15 verse 30 and it, David is literally leaving the kingdom because so many enemies have infiltrated the space that now his life is in danger. And the Bible says that he's walking up the hill of the Mount of Olives with his head covered and he's looking down. I don't know what has happened between 2 Samuel 15 and 30 and the end of verse 3 of Psalm 3, but something has switched his perspective from the ground back to God. But before we shout on the fact that God is the lifter, let me tell you, some of us have legitimate reasons to hold your head down. When you realize that Donald Duck, excuse me, Donald Trump has the potential to be the president again after millions of people died in this country more than any other country because his egomaniacal, narcissistic leadership style in the pandemic not acknowledging that the virus was real and we lost so many people in this nation because of his leadership and white supremacy would be willing to put him in place again. I guess is what Paul Mooney said. He got the right complexion for the protection. When you realize all of the people that are harmed in this nation because of systems of oppression, it makes you hold your head down. When you see earthquakes and you see young people with anxiety and mental disorders on the rise in this nation, it'll make you hold your head down. I have to do a double funeral on Saturday of a mother and a daughter who died in the same car accident. That'll make you hold your head down. All last Last week in Atlanta, I was cleaning out my daddy's house because on December 4th last year, he was found dead in his home at the age of 61 because of complications with diabetes. That'll make you hold your head down. And I'm not the only one in this room that can say, preacher, as saved as I am, when I look at my bank account, sometimes it makes me want to hold my head down. When I see my children struggling and I can't help them, it makes 
makes me hold my head down and with all of the reasons you've got to hold your head down in this nation and in your personal life God is still the lifter of our heads and he will switch your perspective from all of your grief back to his glory and is there anybody here that can help this little preacher admit I know God has lifted my head sometimes I'm not feeling it but he told me to put my head back up sometimes I'm not feeling it at all but God keeps lifting my head I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help because all of my help comes from the Lord do I have some witnesses that have ever felt God lift your head for you. He didn't even require you to use your own strength in your muscular system. He said, I'll be your neck brace. I'll be your head rest. I'll be your neck pillow. You don't have to exert any energy for this. He lifted my head. I know what I'm talking about. As heavy as a week I had last week, and I'm here at Revival Low Key, I need Revival too. But God told me right before I got here, I'm the lifter. And I will lift you up. Hey, I'm sorry, I don't know if y'all yell at this church, but I got one more in me. Hey, anybody been lifted? Take three seconds and thank your God for lifting you up again. Lifting your spirit, lifting your family, lifting your faith. So, last February, my grandmother passes. And in April of last year, I wanted to bring my granddaddy to Chicago, and I put him up real nice like I did your pastor when he came in August. And I put him over at the Royal Sinesta. The only problem with the Royal Sinesta, especially if you get a suite, is that you're right in front of the Trump Tower. And I talked to my granddaddy. I said, granddaddy, you like your room? He said, yeah, it's cool and all, but uh, one problem. Every time I go to the window, all I see is T-R-U-M-P. He said, so I decided to stop looking straight ahead, and I decided to look up. He said, I let the beauty of the sky replace the ugliness of the sign. Can you shake your neighbor's hand and tell them, look up? I know your money's funny, but look up. I know you're going through a breakup, but look up. I know it's rough in front of you, but look up. Look up and live. My brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. And so all I'm trying to tell you is that God will switch your perspective. But if you back into that text just a little more, God just won't switch your perspective. God stabilizes us under pressure because the text says he's my glory. And I told you early on, I read this as a younger preacher and, uh, and it didn't mean the same thing that it means now. Because when I preached this as a younger preacher, I thought I was doing something because I thought glory meant God is my honor. God is my reputation and God is going to protect my honor and my reputation so no matter who's trying to dishonor me God will still honor me and I preached my face off and I was wrong as two left shoes uh huh I wish I could go back some time to that little Reggie and just tell him that was nice but just go sit down and read a little bit more because the original Hebrew of the word glory means kavod let the church say kavod it literally is a Hebrew word that means weight it's the weight the glory of God is the weight of God and I've been telling my church over in Chicago that glory is synonymous with gravity what allows you not to float away out of your seat right now is that there's some invisible pressure that's keeping you in place there's something that's grounding you. There's something that's keeping you stable. Oh, y'all missing all the shout cues. It's something that's holding you down. Because when God's glory is in the room, it's something that grounds me and stabilizes me and anchors me. And with all that could threaten to make me float away with all the pressure, I'm still grounded. Because it's glory has kept me grounded. And can I identify five people that can give God glory for his glory? 
Because some of you would have floated away, you would have fainted, you would have quit a long time ago. But God's glory was the weight that made your weight manageable. Because I need God's weight to help me balance my weight because life already put a weight on us. But then here comes God's glory. That's another weight on top of your weight. But his weight makes your weight lighter. So you're grounded. You're anchored. Y'all, 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 y'all not shouting yet. That means you don't understand what I just said. Because in the words of Dr. Cosby, you ought to tear that pew up right now. Because some of us have been grounded in spite of everything you've gone through. Your feet are still stabilized in spite of everything you've gone through. So y'all not feeling me yet. Well, a few weeks ago, I was at Fellowship Chicago, and I went in the office like I always do, took my coat off to hang it on the rack in my office. Well, as soon as I added that day, one more piece of weight, the whole rod collapsed. I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you on a very inconvenient moment where, I mean, the brackets and everything just come right out the wall, and now all your clothes are all over the floor. I got to go preach. So I left my office with robes and clothes all over the floor. Now, it was 3,000 things on the rod, but I added one more piece of weight, and it collapsed. Just, just one pound of new weight caused it to collapse. I called one of the maintenance people in my room. I said, listen here, I, listen, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what us going to do now because I got to go preach. But I do think you can help me fix this. He said, Pastor, you mind if I come in and look at it? I said, please look at it. He looked in and he quickly assessed the situation. Brother Cam Jarman said to me, he said, Pastor, I don't know who installed this rod. But uh, they did it all wrong. He said, because they put the brackets up and didn't put anchors in the wall. I said, what is an anchor? He said, I can tell you ain't very handy, are you? I said, no, teach me something. He said, whenever you want to install a bracket, you put the anchor in first, then you put the screw in, and the anchor stretches to grip the wall so whatever pressure is placed on the rod, the anchor can keep the pressure. Some of y'all are here right now because God anchored you. And how dare you sit in church on a Thursday night acting like you here because you kept yourself. Anybody know your soul's been anchored? Your life's been anchored. And with all the weight that's been on us, we have not collapsed yet because now unto him who's able to keep you from falling. Can you do me a favor and shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off? And if they don't want to shake your hand, find somebody else and be obedient for a change and look them dead in the eye and say, neighbor, I don't mean to bother you, but I got to tell you my testimony. Tell them, though the storms keep on raging in my life, tell them sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. But if the storm don't cease, if the winds keep on blowing, look them in the eye and say, my soul, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Somebody say yes. My soul is anchored. My family is anchored. My ministry is anchored. My faith is anchored. My hope is anchored. Mercy anchored me. Grace. Anybody been anchored? Looking at you. Looking at you. Praise your God. Because you made it through. Because he anchored you. He kept you. He strengthened you. He covered you. He provided for you. Anybody been anchored? Wait a minute. I got to hurry up and get out of here because I'm too happy tonight. I feel helping my feet tonight. I feel like running on tonight because I don't need you to help me praise him for being anchored. I am a witness. He will keep you safe. And as always, there's always at least three members in every church who say, it don't take all that. If they don't say it, they look it. 
And they sit there and just look at everybody else. I mean, oh my God, that's just a little much for me. I mean, he's loud. Why is he so loud? I mean, it's okay. The sermon is okay, but he's just screaming and the music is loud and the choir is loud. And the man that led the praise and worship, he just gallivanted all over the pulpit. It just doesn't take all that for me. I don't need, it don't take all that for you. But if you didn't pick me up, you can't shut me up. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, So you sit there with your cute self, but let the redeemed, let the anchored, let the kept open your mouth. Give him glory, because he's your glory. He's your lifter. So, so he switches my perspective. He stabilizes me under pressure. But lastly and finally, God is the shield for my protection. I did not say God will give you a shield. I said God is the shield. I didn't just say God will shield you. I said God is the shield. Because the text says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Uh huh, uh huh. I like the King James Version. Because he, he is so poetic and extra, isn't it? Thou art. A shield for me but if I reach down into my Decatur Georgia urban ebonic linguistics I would say you is my shield and I ain't got to preach long we can go home we can ride out right here because everybody in here got a testimony about one time at least God got between you and something trying to hurt you and if you can remember one time that God got between you and something or somebody, give God praise right now for what he blocked. I said give him praise for what he blocked. Don't just give him praise for what he provided, praise him for what he prevented. He is the shield. Now, in Hebrew, the word shield means magain. Let the church say, my gain. And then it says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. That word for me in Hebrew is uh, ba'adi. Let the church say, ba'adi. So this phrase in Hebrew, the original language of the text, literally says, my gain, ba'adi. And normally when you think about a shield, you think about the accoutrement that the soldiers use in military warfare that only blocks weaponry from one direction. But magain ba'adi means in Hebrew to be covered throughout and around. Which means for the first time God is not a unidirectional shield. God is a multi-directional shield. So I'm covered in my front, back, side, left, right, up, down, covered every side. Church folk don't know when to shout. I said God is covering you on your back side, your front side, your left side, your right side, beneath your feet, above your head. You are completely, comprehensively covered every time you walk with God. That's something to shout about. Because half of our trouble doesn't happen in our face, it happens behind your back. But I don't have to worry about what they saying or doing behind my back because I'm covered there. And there's some people under you like Absalom trying to uh, come above you and you ain't got to wonder what's happening at your feet because God's got you there. And there's some people that think they run you and think they can play you and think they have more power over you. And God said, don't worry, I got you there. I am your shepherd. You shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me. Besides still waters, he restoreth my soul. He, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm trying to tell you, you're covered on every side. And yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. 
because thou art with you. His rod and his staff are going to comfort you. He prepares a table. Y'all keep sitting there in the presence of your enemies. Then he anoints your head with oil. Then your cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can you shake one more hand for the second to last time? And shake it and don't hold it like a dead fish. I said shake somebody's hand. If you got a hand, can you shake a hand? And hold their hand and say, neighbor, you're covered. Your front is covered. Your back is covered. Your family is covered. Your house is covered. Your life is covered. Your tomorrow is covered. Your marriage is covered. Your pastor is covered. Your church is covered. Your battles are covered. Your fights are covered. Even your enemies are covered. Now under him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all you can ask or think if you've been covered praise him if you've been blessed praise him if he's looked out for you praise him if he covered you any kind of way praise him let the covered people open your mouth and say thank you for covering me I'm not telling you what I heard, I'm telling you what I've lived because on the fourth Sunday of February, I got a death threat at my church. While I was in church, a death threat was left on the steps of my church that said this year's birthday would be my last birthday. And they told me in church that I couldn't shake hands after church because security was on high alert because they didn't know if the person who dropped the note had left or stayed. I had to sit in my seat and vacillate in my own mind and I said Lord do I need to leave right now or do I go back to the pulpit because if I go back to the pulpit I'm an open target in the church and I told the Lord because there's no shield between me and the pews and the Holy Ghost tap me on the shoulder and said there's no shield that you can see but every day there is a shield that has you covered I wish I had a witness that can give God glory for the invisible blessings, for the invisible angels, for the invisible protection, for the invisible prevention that the Lord has given you. So I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. I, I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And I've had some sleepless nights. But when I look around and think things over, all of my good days still, still, still outweigh my bad days so I won't complain. Can y'all help me feel like I'm at home and put your arm around your neighbor. Put your arm around your neighbor. I wish y'all would stop acting like you're bougie and be obedient tonight. I said put your arm around your neighbor and shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them and say neighbor rough days are part of the journey tell them bad days are part of the journey 
tell them hard days are part of the journey, but be not dismayed, whatever, whatever betide you, because God will take care of you. I said, God will take care of you through every day all the way. He will take care of you. Won't he do it? Have you tried it? Ain't he able? Say it. Say it. Say it. Shake three hands and say, God's got you. 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 So don't you wait till the battle is over. But right now, on a Thursday night, give him glory right now. On a Thursday night, because he got you covered on your left, covered on your right, covered when you go to bed and sleep tonight. Covered, 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 covered. Come up! To God be the glory. To God be the glory. the pain, so many pain, so many pain, so many pain, so many, 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 so many,
know I'm gonna make it. I know I'm gonna make it. I know I'm gonna make it. Am I by myself 31st? I just need a couple witnesses to throw your hands up and say, I believe I'm gonna make it. Yes! 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 Every hand lifted. Because every hand that's lifted is in a surrender position. That you can tell God today, I don't care what day comes, it's still a day you made. And I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. If it's a painful day, it's still a purposeful day. In the sovereign hand of God, all things still somehow work together. So with your hand lifted, I just want you to pray for yourself and ask God, help me through these days. Help me, help me, give me grace. Come on, open your mouth. Don't be shy. He's in this room. Now, God is in the room. The healer is here. The comforter is here. Open your mouth. Say, God, help me. Strengthen me. Be my shield, oh God. Be my glory. Be my lifter. We need you. Cover our pastor. Cover his wife. Cover the members of 31st Street. Cover the community of Richmond. Cover us, Lord. So much danger, so much fear, so much terror, so much violence, so much struggle. But Lord, you are a shield for us. So we sing, pass me not, O oh gentle say. Oh, he, he my own. Oh, cry. While on others thou art calling, while, while on others thou art calling, please do, yes, sir, not pass. Come on, let's sing it like we know how to sing it. We're calling you, say. Somebody, you've heard the Lord speak to your heart and soul on this night. For somebody, it's one of them days. For somebody, it's one of those months, one of those years. And you need the God whose glory can hold you down in this season. If that's you, my brother, my sister, you're in this place and you don't yet have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't wait till Sunday morning. Today is a good day to come to give these leaders your hand, but more importantly, to give God your heart. Then there may be somebody tonight that says, I, I'm saved, but I need a church home. 
We're going to sing this refrain one more time. I'm inviting you, my brother, my sister. You don't have to wait. Today, salvation is in the house. We're going to lift this refrain one more time. The doors of the church are open. If you're here tonight, come on. I'm tonight. Thank you, Pastor Sean, for reminding us that even when it's one of them days, hallelujah, we have a God who will stabilize us. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word tonight. We're getting ready to leave this place. we give four ways to give you know how to do that as we prepare to leave this place I want to leave in the same spirit just stand thank you Pastor Sharp thank you Pastor Ty Jones who blessed us in revival in the fall is here it's good to see you Pastor Ty I want to go in this spirit may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you God's peace. Even in one of them days, <laughs> may 
that God stabilize you. And that God shield you all around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May that God protect you in the streets of Richmond. May that God keep you as you travel. May that God cover your family, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, your nieces, and your nephews until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. We'll see you on Sunday morning. the spirit of the Lord.